Hey guys, I'm going to do a tutorial today on using uh, CorelDRAW X6 to create custom lead-in and lead-out lines for retina engraved views. Um, point of this is to add a little bit of overlap at the edges of a cut part to make sure you get a good clean break. Uh, I often have this uh, problem when I use uh, maybe very thin materials or uh, material, sometimes thicker ones too, um, and I end up with a little bit of a tab connecting uh, where the where the beam path comes in and where it comes out. So I'm going to demonstrate here with a circle first. Um, use the circle tool, drag that out, and um, hold down control, and then lock it into being a one-to-one -one aspect ratio circle. Uh, so then I've got my circle right here. Um, so yeah, like I said, the problem is if you, if you leave it a retina engrave, it does a pretty good job of detecting where to le lead in and lead out uh, with the cut lines, but it'll usually kind of come in from one angle, do the full circle, and then come out of that same spot. Every now and then I get a little bit of a tab right there that I kind of have to either cut out with an X-Acto knife, um, or if it's a softer material like foam or rubber or something like that, you can uh, you can sort of tear it. Um, but uh, you know it's kind of a pain, especially if you're cutting out a lot of circles or a lot of holes in something. So this first example will be for cutting a circle where you want to keep the circle and the the rest of the material is is waste material. Um, so like if you're cutting out a disc, like a coaster or um, you know like maybe some gasket or something like that. Um, so let's pretend this is our circle here that we want to cut out uh, of our sheet and uh, we want to make some lines for it. So you'll start off, you select the circle, right click on it and click convert to curves. That'll convert it to a generic curve type of object that CorelDRAW can do kind of a few more operations on than a normal circle object. Um, if you don't convert to curves first, this pro the process won't work. Um, so after you've converted to curves, come over here and click on the shape tool or push F10. Then I can come in right here on this node right there, right click on that, break apart, go over here, right click on that, break apart. And then go back to my select tool and now it looks the same but it's actually converted in, into two separate curves that make up this circle here. Um, if you right click on this again and hit break curve apart then you can tell that they're actually made up of two separate arc segments uh, whereas initially it was actually a circle object. Um, so I'm going to use the top half as my as my kind of master copy and the bottom half I'm going to just change over uh, to be my uh, lead-in edge. So I'm going to resize this down a little bit to get it to be something a little bit more reasonable. That that works right there. This will be something you can play with uh, to get the hang of it, and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Um, but if if you click on that and hover over and grab that top left node corner there, drag it, and it'll snap to this node corner here and let go, you can see I've got a nice kind of half circle going here. If you select all of those and then go up to here to arrange and then join curves, this little window will pop up. And you hit apply and it'll join those into a single contiguous curve. And what Retina Engrave is looking for is single contiguous curves to be able to do its uh, path planning. If you don't connect them right there, then it's going to just do an arc, and then it'll come back and do this arc later, which sort of defeats the purpose. Um, so you can tell right now, if you drag those around, they're just uh, one single object. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off this lead-in line, because I don't need a full arc like that. I just need a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to the Eraser tool. Uh, sometimes it may default to Crop, but go down to Eraser, and then come in here, oops, I gotta select it first, sorry. Select the object, go to eraser tool, then you can come in here and erase some of this line. That'll be good right there. So now I've just shortened that line up a little bit. Now if I copy and paste this guy, you see I have two of them. I can flip it vertically right here. Now what I'm gonna do is take this node right here and lay it on top of that node right there. So now I've got a basic circle with lead in and lead out, but it's still going to treat it as one, as two separate objects and cut them separately. So if you highlight the whole thing and go back over to join curves again and hit apply, then what we end up with uh, is a single curve object um, that is, instead of being a circle, it is actually a line segment that will trace out a circle. Um, and I'll show you how that looks. If you come over here to the Retina Engrave software, um, get it positioned right. I'm going to print this. Actually, forgot to mention. Uh, select everything and then click hairline outline. That'll keep you from making a double double moves on everything. I'm going to print that to retina engrave, just a standard way. Spectrum engineering driver, and it's going to give me an issue about page size because I don't have that set up to default something. So I'll throw that to e size sheet and then hit print. And that should pop up over here. It's giving me the large raster job pop up. Now, this doesn't apply to raster, so I'm going to just load the vectors. So now I end up with this shape here. Um, 
I'm going to change to simulate vector at 1x um, just to show you what happens so if you hit play you can see that the dot actually comes over starts there and then begins tracing around the outside of the circle here as that goes around it does the cut and then normally it would lead in right about here or sometimes at an angle um, but you can tell right there that it passes over that same spot again and essentially cuts just that one spot twice um, so uh, you know it that's that's how that lead in lead out works right there and then this would end up um, cutting out a nice smooth clean circle with guaranteed no extra tabs uh, now if you wanted to make a hole in something you would do a similar process I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna go a little faster for the second one but say I wanted to make a clean hole in something rather than a clean um, circle of something well I'm gonna do the same setup here convert it to curves edit my nodes break apart at the two symmetry lines right there then break the whole curve apart now I can pull this in go ahead and shrink that down a little bit grab that node and this time instead of putting it like I, I put it right here for the last one I put it right here for this one line those nodes up highlight them join curves can make it one contiguous object go to my eraser tool and erase some of this inside path right there then I'm going to copy and paste this guy again flip it vertically I'm going to line these two nodes up Oops, grab the wrong thing there I'm going to line up these two nodes here and now you can see that kind of what we're doing is creating an interior lead-in line I'm going to join curves again and now I again have one single curve object that starts here does a full loop and then comes back to there so I'll show you how that works in Retina and Curve one more time Sorry about that small editing mistake. Um, one last step, grab the whole thing and convert it to a hairline outline. And uh, now we can print to retina engrave. So now if we toggle back over to here and hit play, you can see that the line comes in from the side here and it starts at this point and it does a full trace here and then it's going to leave at that bottom point just like that um, so go back to Corel draw here I want to do one last example get rid of this say you wanted to do a shape that wasn't a circle say it was uh, some type of a polygon shape or um, a square uh, star diamond that kind of thing um, uh, with a square it's not going to be a great example because you could more uh, more quickly do this with just uh, individual set of lines um, but I think it'll give you a general example of, of how to do it with a polygon shaped figure um, like I said before you'd usually want to use just a two-point line tool to do what I'm about to do um, but uh, but this is just a tutorial so uh, if you right click on the square convert it to curves come back over here to the shape tool you're gonna break it apart at these three corners here basically you break it apart at all of the corners that are uh, adjacent to the corner that you want to lead in on uh, you right click on it again oh. I can select it break curve apart now you'll see that we've got actually three separate entities here you've got uh, this L shape here which is going to represent the uh, it's going to represent any other shape that you'd normally have. It's just a rectangle right here, but uh, it, you know it could be a star or uh, you know a traced outline, something like that. But you go up here and you take these extra lines that you broke out and expand them just a little bit. So enough to give you your lead in uh, your lead in space. And you take back the original node, hover over that until you can uh, until you can snap to the node right there at the bottom. Place it on that node right there. Do the same thing up top here. Basically rebuild your shape, but now with extended lines over that corner piece there. <clears throat> Highlight it all, join the curves again, uh, convert it to a hairline outline, and then we'll send that back to Retina Engrave. I'll show you how that prints. So yeah, um, if you hit play, then you can see the line starts up there, traces down, and uh, it'll move around the whole figure just on the outside. Now again this is uh, pretty similar um, 
if you're cutting an outside piece, like say this would be good if you're cutting like a nameplate or something out of another piece, uh, this would not be what you do for cutting a rectangular slot in something because then you'd end up with a couple extra lines. But you could do similar effects to, uh, you know, maybe uh, add the lines on the inside or something like that. So um, anyways, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Hope it helps you guys out.